Good morning and Happy New Year to you all. We trust that we can look ahead with hope and positivity as 2012 unfolds. This morning we mark the second Sunday of Christmas and also the Feast of the Epiphany which takes place on Wednesday this week. If you look at the crib scene before you leave, you will see that the shepherds have left, as have the angels and the innkeeper. The infant Jesus is in his mother's arms as they receive the visitors from the east. We should be hearing more about them when John speaks with us later. Just a few practical announcements before we begin our worship with regard to the present restrictions because of COVID-19. We are without Paul this morning. He's been contacted by Track and Trace and is having to self-isolate. So our hymns are on YouTube. Do bear with us. We did have problems with technical technicalities during the first service, so um, bear with us if that does happen again. The offertory box will be brought forward during the Carol We Three Kings. If you missed it on your way in, there will be a box available as you leave in which you can place your offering. At the end of the service, please leave promptly through the side chapel without chatting in church. We know this seems harsh, particularly if you want to exchange New Year greetings with folk you haven't seen for some, for some time. But please leave the chatting until you're outside in the fresh air. And now to worship. Please join in with all the words on bold time. Christ has brought us out of darkness to live in his marvellous light. A thousand years in God's sight are like a single day, like an evening that has already gone. Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Lord Jesus, enter our homes and our lives. You hold the key to God's way of justice. Open to us your kingdom of peace. Our first hymn, you are invited to stand for the hymns, if you are able. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord.
Please sit as we come to our time of confession. The response for the confession will be on the screen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, wise men from the East worshipped and adored you. They brought you gifts, gold, incense and myrrh. We too have seen your glory, but we have often turned away. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We too have gifts, but we have not fully used them or offered them to you. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We too have acclaimed you as King, but we have not served you with all our strength. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We too have welcomed you as God but we have not desired holiness. Lord, in your mercy, forgive yes. us and help us. We too have welcomed you as Saviour, but we have failed to tell others of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, forgive yes. us and help us. Having confessed our sins, we can accept God's gift of forgiveness. Though may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our time of prayer for others. The wise men knelt in worship before our Saviour. Let us now come in worship and offer our prayers to his heavenly Father, saying, Lord, in your mercy, Father, the wise men came from the East to worship your Son. Grant to Christians everywhere a true spirit of adoration. We pray that the worldwide Church may always be ready to travel in your way and in your direction. Guide us in all our decision making as we seek to follow your will for your Church in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Son is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Grant an abundance of peace to your world. We pray for the nations as they live through conflicts and struggle with identity. We long for all peoples to acknowledge the true and living God and pray for hearts to be turned to seek your ways of justice and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the Holy Family, share the life of the people of Nazareth. Protect in your mercy our neighbours and families, together with the whole community of which we are part. We pray for a spirit of generous love, <coughs> understanding and mutual respect within our families our church fellowship and the parish we serve. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the wise men presented to your Son gold, incense, and money. Accept the gifts we bring and the offering of our hearts at the beginning of this new year. We pray for hearts open to the promptings of your Holy Spirit and for wills ready to respond. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O Lord, as the years change, may we find rest in your eternal changelessness. Help us to meet this new year bravely, in the faith that while life changes all around us, you are always the same, guiding us with your wisdom and protecting us with your love, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Please accept these prayers for the sake of this, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now have the collect for the second Sunday of Christmas. God our Father, in love you sent your Son, that the world may have life. Lead us to seek him among the outcast and to find him in those in need. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Now Caroline will bring us our Bible reading and then uh, we shall sing our next. Well, we won't sing it, we will stand and hum it in our hearts and sing it in our hearts. Thank you, Caroline. Matthew 2, starting at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is born King of the Jews? We see his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the Messiah who was to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But to you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, here are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found from out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the sky when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to 
that fruit tree by another route. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for our next card, We Three Kings, after which John will speak with us.
The picture that many of us have of this story is so very different from the real thing. We sing the carol that we've just heard. We three kings from Orient are. But actually, they were not kings. They were astrologers. You may know the names given to the kings. Caspar, Belagon, and Balthazar. But in the original Bible story, there is no mention of their names. The wise men had travelled many, many miles to see the king of the Jews. But when they found him, poured gifts upon him as they worshipped him with great joy. This is so different from the approach taken today. We expect God to come looking for us, to explain himself and to prove to us that he is and to give us gifts. Those who are wise seek and worship Jesus today, not for what they can get from him, but for who he is, the true Son of God. The wise men said that they sell Jesus' star, as mentioned by Jacob in Numbers 24, verse 17, in the Old Testament. There is a theory that this star may have been the conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn in 6 BC. But surely God, who created the heavens, would have created a special star to signal the, the arrival of his beloved son. Whatever the nature of this star, the wise men set off on their long journey, searching for a king, and they found him. This teaches us that God can use anything or anyone to accomplish his plans. For a moment, let us turn from the Old Testament to the present day. The Christmas star of 2020 appeared on the 21st of December in the night sky. And if we went down to the promenade and looked over Wales, the direction of Wales, as Jupiter and Saturn orbited closer together in what is known as the Great Conjunction. They formed a single brilliant shining light. This was also called the Christmas Star or the Bethlehem Star. According to Christian law, a bright light in the sky led the three wise men to the place of Jesus' birth. This recent conjunction was the closest to be seen by the naked eye from the earth since in July 1623 and beyond that in 1226. Meanwhile, returning to earthly matters, King Herod had reigned in Palestine for nearly 40 years and he was not called Herod the Great for nothing. He was the only ruler to have kept continuous peace and stability in that region for a long period. A clever man. He was an inspired architect and builder, a man of great vision. He was a generous man. In difficult times, he had been known to stop taxing the people in order to give them a chance to survive. But there was one huge flaw in his character. He could be very suspicious and couldn't tolerate any rival who rivaled his power. He was paranoid about people supposing plotting against him. In fact,
fact, he murdered his wife and mother-in-law. She didn't deserve it. And had three of his sons assassinated. Anyone who got close to claiming power from him was dealt with ruthlessness. So when the three visitors from the East arrived looking for the King of the Jews, his reaction is not hard to imagine. There is only one King of the Jews, and no one is taking my title from him, said King Herod. He goes to his chief priests and teachers of the law for advice. Where will the Messiah be born? He asked them. For I wish to go and worship him. And they know the answer, for they have studied the scriptures. The Messiah will be born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. What would we expect these great religious leaders to do? To hurry off to Bethlehem to greet the Messiah they had all been waiting for. But no, they got within their own lives untroubled and unconcerned with the amazing news that they had just received. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were aware of the prophets and in Micah, in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 emphasized the need for justice and peace and prophesied about Jesus the Messiah who would gather the people into one nation and how he would be their king and ruler acting mercifully towards them. When Jesus was born, these same religious leaders became his greatest enemy. They expected the Messiah to be, be a great military and political deliverer like Alexander the Great. Herod did not want to worship Jesus. He was lying. This was a simple trick to get the wise men to return to him and reveal to him where Jesus lived. Herod's plan was to kill Jesus. Jesus was probably one or two years old when the wise men finally found him. By this time, Mary and Joseph were married and living and intended to stay in Bethlehem. Suddenly, the wise men arrived, bearing expensive gifts, worthy of a future king, acknowledging what he would accomplish in the future. Gold was a gift for royalty, frankincense a gift for the deity, and there a spice used to anoint the body for funeral. The wise men brought these gifts and worshipped Jesus for who he was. This is the essence of true worship, honouring Christ for who he is and being willing to give all that is valuable to you. Worship God because he is perfect, just and the almighty creator of the universe worthy of the best you personally have to give. The story of the visitors from East has a four stage story, from head to the heart. First they discuss, they study the facts. Their journey of faith begins with them asking questions. They are astrologers, they study the stars. When they see strange phenomena in the sky, they begin to question about it. Secondly, they know the only way to get an answer is to set out on a journey. A journey that involves risk. They have come to the court of the powerful King Herod and risk their lives asking questions about Jesus. But their desire for knowledge and truth is stronger than their fear. 
Thirdly, they come into the presence of Jesus and they worship him. Part of their worship is to offer him gifts. Theirs is a sacral facial worship <coughs> that is prepared to give as well as to receive. Finally, they make their way home back to their everyday lives, not leaving Jesus behind, but with him. Travelling with Jesus, you take another road, and life is never the same again. Under the guidance of God, our route, our route is chosen for us. So in the response of the Easter visitors to Jesus, we see it, we see our very own journey of faith, starting with questions in the mind, searching for knowledge, setting out on a journey which will inevitably involve risk and vulnerability, but a journey that leads to Jesus, where we give him all that we have to offer, and then God will send us out, inspiring guiding us on the way to go. A new journey with the experience of Christ in our hearts, the way of worship and adoration, the way God chooses for us. So, in this remarkable story, stripped of the tinsel and the imaginary names, well, we Will we be like King Herod and reject Jesus? Will we be like the chief priests and teachers of the law and remain lost in apathy? Or will we be like the visitors from the East and step out on the journey of faith? A journey that takes us on a new road a new direction under God's guidance and within his grace and love and compassion. That is prayer. Lord God, we remember how you led the wise men to Bethlehem by the light of a star. Guide us as we travel to the heavenly city, that we may know Jesus as the true and living way. For his name's sake, Amen. Thank you, John. May we journey into the new year with that message in our hearts. Would you please stand? We say the creed on the screen. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to the quality of God but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God of Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
notices that there are just two or three items which I've been asked to draw to your attention. The funeral of Elaine Dyer tomorrow, Monday the 4th of January, will be at 11am here in church. The online Bible study with night prayer resumes tomorrow night at 8pm. It is open to anyone who wishes to join it. You don't have to have been to previous meetings. Please note the information on the newsletter about the Diocesan Online Fruitfulness on the Frontline course, which starts on Tuesday the 5th of January at 7.30pm. This recommended course is about serving God in the places where you spend your time. The link is on the newsletter for anyone who's interested in joining that course. Oh, we've got our technology back, so please stand if you are able for the blessing by your head and sending out prayer. Please join in the words in old time. Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, revealed in his glory, worshipped by angels, proclaimed among the nations. Exalted to the highest heavens, believed in throughout the world. Blessed be God, our strength and our salvation, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless one another with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. And the final hymn is Jesus, we enthrone you.
we join together in the sending out prayer. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Lord, shine your light upon our path as we go. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of